everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney, your archer bun. Today I'm going to show you an all-level friendly painting step-by-step -step of a girl in a red hat in the rain with roses. It's got all the feels, but it's still really beginner friendly. Every technique will be explained, every color mix, and there's only three colors, black, white, and red. So that's also super beginner friendly. If you check the description down below, you'll see a link to our website. If you're not really ready to draw yet, we provide traceables and extra resources including videos on how to use them. So you don't have to know anything coming into this. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He always helps me bring these classes to you by making sure that the camera is pointing at whatever I'm talking about, any technique that I'm demonstrating, any color mixing that I'm doing. So you always see what's going on with the brush and you always understand what's happening. This video is broken down into steps and chapters that will be matching a written out instruction uh, process that we call a mini book. And that way, between the video and that resource and the traceable, it's so beginner friendly. You're going to love it. I cannot wait to show this to you. So get your paint, get your brushes, and come back and meet me. I'm going to show you how to paint this. The materials for today's lesson are a 9 by 12 stretch canvas. You could use paper, canvas board, or anything for acrylic painting. It wouldn't matter, but that's what I'm using. 9 by 12 stretch canvas. I've got Mars black acrylic paint, titanium white acrylic paint, and cad red medium acrylic paint. I've got a mister, a little micro mister, a couple of craft sponges. You could use house sponges as long as they're not going back into your kitchen. And I have my golden fluid acrylic titanium white. Now, this is just a thinned paint with a lot of pigment in it. You could thin your white paint that you already had or use craft paint. Any of those will work. Those are the basic materials we're going to be doing for today's lesson. Does that look fun to you, John? Oh, yeah. All right. So we're going to go on. This is step one. So for this first step, I'm going to want to lightly mist my surface. And I mean lightly, I just want it to not be thirsty. And I'm going to take one of my craft sponges. My craft sponge is damp. I get this one, so I have the other one for later. My craft sponge is damp, but not, I can't squeeze any water out of it. It's just damp to the touch. I'm going to come here and I'm going to load it up like this on the edge with my white paint. And then I'm going to very carefully come and get a little of my black paint into that load. You can see the load there. And I'm with light pressure going to drag down my surface this rainy effect. Sometimes I come back, I try to make sure that the rain is pretty streaky. And the other thing that I want to make sure that it is, is straight. If I need to moisten my sponge, I actually missed it rather than try to get it re-wet. Notice that I'm not pressing super hard into the surface. You can uh, also get the streaky effect with a brush, but this is really an easy way to do it. And as you can see, it does a beautiful blend background, mm -hmm. which I really like. I'm not making it too dark of a gray or too light of a background. I just want it to feel like rain pouring down in the distance. Sometimes I have to turn my surface weirdly to keep a straight line. And I can always come back the opposite direction. If I've loaded my sponge well, I can get some pretty nice rain effects. You can see I'm just getting, there's the load. Yeah, that gives me some nice rain effects. Mm -hmm. Now, with these uh, sponges, if you want to be able to reuse them, you've got to rinse them out after every painting technique in acrylic. Because the acrylic will dry in the cellulose and ruin them. Make sure the edges are where I want them. There we go. And as long as you're happy with your rain effect, that is all you've got to do for the first step. We're ready to go on to the next step. Be sure and dry your canvas for this one. So 
So for the next part of this video, we've got to do what's called kind of a compositional map. That's just the major structure lines of the drawing that let us put in the painting. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can freehand it in. I'm going to freehand it in. Or if you check the description below and also on the website video page, I will put in the link for how to use a traceable and you can download the traceable from there. You can use a traceable or transfer image to get those in. You can uh, also kind of observe in fast speed me putting in this drawing if you're wanting to know how would I do that if I were going to freehand that in. So let's get that freehanded in. All right, so for this part, once you get your sketch in or your transfer using serial paper, however you get your design on the canvas, um, I'm going to take black paint and I'm going to kind of make a line drawing of everything. That will be really helpful uh, when I'm painting her in later. Um, so let's go ahead and get our black paint. I'm going to thin it with water. And I'm going to come in and just make sure that my lines, the ones that are important to me, are painted in. And also sometimes this can be really great for you to see like how something is working in the composition. This is called lining. Now I know I'm going to put hair in front of the hat there, but I like to show the perspective of its big floppiness. I like the hat. Do you like the hat? I like the hat. She's got a nice sun hat. She's uh, taking care of herself with a nice sun hat, making it's, sure she does not get the sunburn. I like the the, the hats down in front of the eyes like you don't get to see what's happening here I got I got some eye stuff happening that you can't see now I know I'm gonna have drippy roses there so there's no point to put those in but I've got to get this just to at least this point and I might go ahead and do the um, the center lips but I'll be extra careful with this black because I don't want it to overwhelm the lips You don't want a thick line there um, that overwhelms everything on your composition. Make sure I got a smile on both sides. Is she happy? There we go. She's smiling. All right, so make sure everything is dry. We'll come back for the next step. So there's a couple fun things we're going to do here. We're going to paint in the shadow part of the hat and we're also going to make it feel like water is running off of her. So the first part I'm going to do is I'm going to take my number four round, the number four round. I'm going to take a little of my red paint and a smidge of my black paint together and I'm going to make a dark red and that is the shadow color in my hat. I'm just paint that on the inside. Because the hat, uh, as it folds over, is a little more in shadow. You can make it a little bit darker in the red if it needs to be. Really up to you. It'd be at least a brick color or dark. Paint that in neatly. Come over, same thing. And I will take it over where I know the hair is going to be. Because the hair is black, it will layer over this very easily. This particular painting will go really good with my uh, girl wearing sunglasses. Mm -hmm. It'd be a neat matchy matchy. Different seasons, same kind of style. You got a lot of girls. I do. You have something to say there. Apparently I do. So when you have that in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my damp sponge and I'm going to get a little of my red and a little of my red black. And I'm going to turn this aside because it's easier for me to do kind of to get a straight, but I'm going to make sure that my hat 
Ooh. Has some rain coming off of it. This is seems like something that you might want to practice if you are nervous about. It is something that's a good idea to make sure. If I want to clean up, I just literally flip my sponge over to the damp side. And I can help clean up that, that drip. See how it cleans up? Or if you need to, you can take another damp, clean sponge. Because the paint is dry underneath. And that's why I'm always like, oh. you know, make sure you dry that paint underneath. Yeah. Because then you can kind of clean up. Might get a little more red paint here. Little rain going down. Kind of an effect. I feel like I lost a little of the hat that I painted in. So what I'll do is I will dry this and then paint the hat back in. Hmm. Okay? Okay. Now, some uh, important safety information whenever you're painting with sponges and paint. Um, like, we're painting with a cadmium hue today. Uh, if you were painting with real cadmium, you do need to be aware that you can have an allergy to that. Um, and also that you want to have some safety precautions taken around real cadmium pigments. They uh, make them pretty safe for artists, but it's still a good idea to be thoughtful about it. And whenever I get my sponges out, I try to remind you guys to think about those things. But if you're painting like with student paint or craft paint, you're already in a hue, so you're okay. All right. That is the hat with the rain coming down. So the next part we get to paint is the red hat. The red hat is a lot of fun to paint. Um, you really just need to use a brush that makes painting the hat comfortable. I'm going to use uh, my number eight cat's tongue. You could use a filbert or bright, just whatever brush you had that's about this big for acrylic paint. doesn't specifically have to be this one at all. Mm -hmm. I am going to grab my red and black again. Because that's a good start. And I'll mix those together. And I'm going to start the hat with my shadow color, but we're actually going to build up on that. I'll come along here. And you can see I really easily paint over the black lines that I have. They just give me a nice anchor to work from. I'm on the edge of my brush to get a, a nice complete line. I have medium pressure when I want to paint the canvas fully. Medium hat pressure? Medium hat pressure. <laughs> medium hat pressure. I'm along here at the brim. For all the I, hatters. I am kind of curving my brush strokes and doing long brush strokes to help have the hat feel round, if you can see that. When I want to have a crisp edge, I go to the edge of the brush and then where I want there to be a nice flow or pull. I come down and make sure those strokes are long. I find sometimes that helps. A little bit there. Now I know at the brim I'll have to put in some shading, but right now we're just trying to get in that basic hat. Hmm. The basic hat in. Come around on the edge. And then again, trying to use my brush strokes to kind of talk about shape, right? I still think this is a fedora. It could be a fedora. I don't know anything about hats, like what type of hat it is. I think it's a wide brim fedora. Okay. I don't know. It's don't. a functional one for rain because it's keeping this rain off of her face. That's that's for sure. Unless it's felt. <laughs> and then that's why it's all the red running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're so weird. I know now, too much about hats is what it is. While I'm here, I'm going to take just a little more black into my paint. And along the brim, 
I'm going to make sure that I do kind of, it's not a fully black line, but it's a definitely dark line and I'll make sure that I'm shading and look how I'm blending it. The paint, the paint here is wet. Since the paint is wet, I can blend this new wet paint into it hmm. and kind of make sure that that's a soft transition. That works as long as the paint is wet. It ceases to work when it's dry, and then you got to switch to a dry brush technique. But I'm on the edge of my brush, and you can see I'm just softly kind of merging those ends together. And that way, when I come back with my brighter red, it won't be such a big thing. All right. Dry this and come back and we will finish the red on the hat. So now that this is dry and you have your dark red, you're going to take your brush. I'm still using my number eight. You just keep using what you initially painted the hat with. And then we're going to kind of come over the top here. And I do let some of the shading of the hat sort of peek through. So this is a bit of a dry brush, as aforementioned. And I do also let my brush stroke, the directionality of it, help create the shape of the hat. You can kind of see how that brim is curving there. And by letting a little bit of the dark paint underneath show, it sort of does help the brim have shape. I'm going to come here and also very carefully. I'm going to come across carefully. So I come down and make a nice edge and I'm curving that stroke. And kind of coming on the edge here. Now I'm going to turn my canvas just so that I have an easy time getting to this mm -hmm. line. We can see. You should you always spin. make sure that you are moving your surface, not your body. A lot of times when we're new to painting, we move our uh, body, not the surface, and that's a mistake because that's how you get injured. Hmm. I'm going to take a little bit of my dark color again and just make sure that I've got a little brush around the brim that it makes the brim different than the rest of the hat. Look at that. So that's all it takes to get that hat in. We're going to dry it. I know there's a lot of drying it. And then we're going to come back for the next step where we start to put her in. So for the next part, it's going to be really nice to put her hair in because her hair comes out over the hat. I'll start with my number eight and then I'll go to my number four round. I'm telling you the names and numbers of these just so that you know, but you just use your closest approximation that you have at home. My paint water is pretty dirty, but since I'm doing black, it's okay. I don't have to change it quite yet. I'm going to prime my brush. I'm going to load up some nice pure black paint. And I'm going to come here on the edge of my brush and begin to paint her hair in. Come along her neck. Of curve these strokes. These strokes are kind of like a little S curve. Mm -hmm. And I will take the hair out a little bit with my brush, but I finish the details with my number four round. And you can kind of see that curve on the hair. Helps it feel a little bit like hair. Want a solid black covering. There we go. So that's the beginning of the hair. I'm going to rinse out this brush and put this aside. I'll grab my number four ram because it has a nice point. And you can see here I bring a drop of water to my paint and I kind of swirl it around to thin it. I roll it and I load up on my toe. I'm going to come here and when, how I get the little hair tendrils is I release my pressure as I take the brush stroke out. That always takes the brush to a taper. 
if I wanted to curl some hair, I would come here and. Mm. However, you want to blow her hair because on a weathery day, hair does tend to blow. Like to make sure that the hair is in motion and has energy. Mm -hmm. And come over here, and I'll make sure that there's just a little bit here as well. And I just make sure that. Her hair feels like it's in motion. All right. I can come in right now if I want to. And kind of clear up the line on the chin just to make sure that's a nice clean line. Mm. Good one on the neck. And there a little bit on the clavicle. All right. So that's how you get in the hair. Remember to release your brush pressure on the end of the stroke so that the stroke tapers and to put a little curve into your brush stroke. So when we have some nice flowing hair in, we've got our hat put in, we're going to start to put in the girl. When we actually just do her in gray, so I'm going to take a little bit of my white and black together. And I'm going to mix a light gray. My number four round. And I'm going to come in and very carefully. And I need it to be a light gray. It's about the same value of gray as the background rain here. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely not uh, pure white. But it's still pretty light. Just paint that very carefully down her neck. And around her mouth, just everywhere, you know, that you're going to be putting her in. Mm -hmm. This just gives that nice, smooth skin tone. Yeah, we're just smoothing that out so it's not uh, in, in rain like the background. Right, just a differentiation. But you don't want to... I've seen color so. it so much so that it draws attention. How do you mean? Well, I mean, like if you made it like uh, an obvious skin tone. It well, would stand but this out. is a black and white painting, so we wouldn't really make an obvious skin tone. That's what I mean. It's like so, it kind of that's a, it's a grayish tone that kind of. We're just in. saying, if this were a black and white picture, it would be like uh, uh, same. So just thinking in that way, but I'm smoothing it out because if, if, you know, she has the streaks and it looks like her skin is raining. Right. And I don't want her skin to be raining. At this moment. I mean, right. later as an artist, I might be like, your skin should rain. But right now I'm like, you know, I'm leaving your little clavicle. And now up on her face, I'm going to make a darker gray. Right. So this is not black by any means, but it's a darker gray. And I'm going to cast a shadow under the hat. Mm. Just across, cast a shadow under the hat. And then from the chin, and it kind of does a little curve and down. Cast a little shadow this way. Just a little bit down the neck. And a bit above the collarbone. I can always come back with my black under here and exaggerate that or come around my chin, clean up any lines I need to. 
that this is just good. Now I've got to dry it before I add any highlights um, because if I tried to add highlights now, they would just blend into the gray. So let's call this a step and we'll come back and add the highlights. So as long as your surface is dry, you can come back now with a little bit of your white paint. I'm going to add a drop of water to my brush just to make sure the paint is flowing. And I'm going to come here and put in a little highlight on our chin. That's quite bright, so I may have to kind of blend that with just a little gray. But I want it to be a highlight, but not like a highlight. <laughs> I'll come under the collarbone here. And on that side there. There we go. So we've got just a little highlight on the chin. And if I need to, I can take my brush and damp but clean. I can kind of soften this on the edges so that they're not real hard, if you can see there. Mm. A way that you can do that. So it's there, but it's not such a hard edge like. Because you want her to have a highlight. You got a chin. Mm -hmm. You just don't want it to be a chin. <laughs> <laughs> While she's here, uh, one of the things that we can do is we can put on the first color of red. So I'm going to take a little of my black and my red again. I'm not going to mix as dark of a color as I did maybe up here. I'm definitely going to come across. And just paint in my lips. A nice little bowed bottom, bowed top. Right there. Rinse that out. And a fun thing we can do is we can take a little bit of our slightly darker gray and go right here. Do a little bit right there. Mm -hmm. Little shadows. And then come back with a little highlight just on the toe of my brush, just the tip. So that you get a little bit of a smile going. If you get too much, you always just come back with a little bit of your gray. There you go. All right. Let's call that a step and we'll come back and we'll put the finishing touches on the lips. Hey, in this step, I'm going to put some reflections on the top lip that I'm going to decide I don't like and I'm going to paint away. So when you see me do it, don't do it with me. You wait for me to just put the bottom reflection in and then decide I didn't like the top. So when you have this basic construct in and everything is there and you've got your lips and they're dry, you can add some highlights. I'm going to come here and I'm going to take my red and I'm going to go on the bottom across my bottom lip. I will allow some of the shadow be there and I might come in and I'll make a not the brightest red but a brighter red mm. so up here should be just a little darker than the base lip can you see the difference between those two mm -hmm. just a little bit darker than the bright red bottom and there's a bit of a shadow between the top lip and the bottom lip Right, there we go. So slightly brighter, slightly darker, 
Let's dry it real fast, and then we're going to add highlight. So as long as it's dry, so it will take the highlight, what you can do now, I'm going to take a small detail brush, and I'll go ahead and grab my white paint on my small detail brush, and I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight right here. And come across here. These are just like the little reflections of the red lip, right? And just come across the bottom where her lip is got a reflection. And if that bugs you up top at all, right? Like if your reflections aren't coming out, you can always go back over. Is this like bugging me? Sorry guys. But sometimes you just you just go back over. And I kind of actually like that. And I think that that's going to be easier and uh, more successful for you guys at home. So in this next bit, I'm going to start the other rain and the other roses. I know I've got some roses up here that I'm going to be doing and I've got roses down here. And I want to have some running down uh, water that is coming there. So I'm going to get my damp sponge again. And I'm going to make sure I'll take my mister and make sure it's damp. I don't want it to ever have like a drip of water that I could drip out. And I'm going to get it even maybe a little more wet. I'm going to change my water too. Good time to change your water to clean water. Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to load up a little bit of my white. And I want it to be fairly thin. You can see I'm kind of like rubbing this down here. And where I know I'm going to have the rain coming down from the roses, I'll just pull this down. And you'll remember if you didn't like something in your face, as long as your painting were dry, you could um, go back and change your mind, right? Mm -hmm. So see, I'm pinching the sponge to get a little control over it. Now, we can do drips and stuff like that where we just let things drip, but I do find that that can be a little anxious making. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to rinse out and really squeeze out, and then we'll do the red down here that we're going to have. I'm going to grab a little bit of my red. And again, I want it to be thin, so I'm going to swirl it around. And I'm going to make sure that when we go to do our roses, we've got a bit of their color coming down and raining down. Now, I know I've got a circle here like this. So I've got a little room to add their drip. Sometimes I will move my canvas to have a more effective time. And I might... Do some darker drip downs. Mm. And I'll put that in water so that it doesn't dry. Let's dry that. So what you want is some drips from about here to here and from about here to here on your hat. I like to make this drip, drip taper up. Can you see that at an angle? Mm -hmm. Remember, before the paint is dry, as long as the surface is underneath is wet, uh, it, if this is dry and that's wet, you can change your mind with your sponge. But I don't want to change my mind now, so I'm going to dry it. Once I dry it, I can't change my mind. Okay, so on the roses, I'm going to show you this, and I just want you to know when you first go to do this, it can be a little bit mind-boggling, but once you learn it, it's a fantastic rose. This is the simple rose. And how the simple rose works is I'm going to start with a little of my red and white. This is going to be my up top white roses. But I want the interior of them to be a little darker. I'm going to come here. I've got a big cabbage right here. And what you do is you make a little circular stroke. I've got my number four round. And then I'm going to come around on the top of it and come back in another circular stroke. This one, I curve around bigger, and I press harder. 
And then I'll come this next stroke. I'm going to come starting there, bring it around, press real hard, and then release. And you can see what it is, is these strokes are building almost like uh, little weaves or building blocks. And it's nice to make sure that like I can finish a stroke if it didn't end nicely, but I want to make sure my next stroke is going to be lighter. So I've added more white. I'm going to press harder. This is a bigger petal and I'll bring that around. See how that is? Now we've got several times that we do this. So if you like mess one of them up because we come in and we definitely will come back. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of got the sense of how that goes, right? It's a little weird. We're going to come back in a little bit darker. And I just wanted you to sort of see it because when they all are blended in together, they're a little hard to see Yeah. what I'm doing. But that's what I'm doing. This time, though, we're going to bring them in where they sort of touch. The rose will be darker on the inside. And then as I come out to the outside, will be lighter. Okay. So same thing here. I'm going to do another big rose. It's going to be not as big as this one, but another big focal. You can see I'm doing that same sort of circular stroke. Mm -hmm. Now, now that you understand the building blocks of those, and sometimes I'll do little smaller interior strokes. That's just the start of that. Make a little one in there. And you can always come in. I'll do this one a little lighter and layer them so that it's like that. So many layers. Just these are like little circles that go around each other. Take the little red. And on white roses, I'm going to make sure that the interior still reads as pink. I'm here and just make sure these interior are still read as pink. Rinse out and let's come back with a good load of white paint. We haven't gotten into the fluid. Bring the white over the top. I like to do this while the rose is still a little bit wet. That's just because there's some blending that happens. Hmm. And I'm putting little strokes. And it kind of just builds the rose shape. It's still a little wet. Curve. Curves there, loaded up with more white. So, and then the finishing work of those is when we come back with the fluid and the little details. So, we're going to say that's the white roses, and then I'll come down and show you how to do the red rose. So here we're going to do a nice little run of red roses and the red roses will have pink centers too, but their pink centers will be darker to begin with. And then they're going to go out into much darker uh, red, red bloom, just with little white highlights at the end. I'm going to go ahead and thin some of my paint and I'm going to begin the process again. You guys remember it's a little curved stroke. We just start layering these curved strokes around each other. They're like little just circles. And it, it is hard. And I'm going to do this one up by the shoulder. And these are going to be kind of like coming around. Let me wear that I've put the rain down. i got to cover up. Hmm. Give her a little shoulder. Yeah, because it's supposed to be like that's what's running from the, the shoulders is her. Let 
I like layering these up. A nice big one here. Sometimes I have to kind of fold my uh, brush over and load to the tip. That can be one of the tricks that you got to watch for is loading to the tip mm -hmm. of the brush. Some roses should be smaller. I think it's important to vary the sizes. I'm going to do a nice big one over here. Nice big one over here. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little one over on the shoulder, like a little friend. You can see we just like layering them in. Yep. Nice little big one here. And you can see sometimes I'll make a bigger circle to start thinking about size and then just bring it around. A small one there. So when we have those in, I will rinse this out. And interestingly enough, I'm going to come back with my red, my pure cad, and really load that up. My brightest red. And kind of add some of that to the rope. Oh, yeah. If I need to fill in, I will. Okay, I can easily do that. This one takes a couple of layers for me. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get them in quicker. It might take you a couple more layers. Uh, what I found is, is it's just kind of committing in the style of flower just kind of committing in and just bring those around Want a nice pop of color. Right, where it feels very bright and lush. I might go a little heavier there mm -hmm. so you really see the color. It's just those curved strokes. And then come back into my white again. I'm going to get a drop of water in there to thin it. And roll my brush. Sometimes I have to wipe my brush out on a little piece of paper towel or something. Yeah, and then I'll just come back and do the centers again. So see, that just sort of builds up the kind of layering of the rows. And it also lets you put the faces facing different directions. They face up, they can face to the side. They're just kind of a fun little rose to do. You can see I face that one back that way. If I need to get control over my brush, sometimes I roll it and load to the toe. You know, and you play with that until you are happy. I'm going to say that's good because it's going to be the little white detail at the end that brings them all together, all mm -hmm. of this together. Uh, let's come back and I'll show you how to finish this piece up.
So this is when I'm going to get uh, my fluid involved. Uh, you could get your craft paint. You could thin your white paint with water. Um, just whatever gets it to a very liquid consistency. And I'm going to start with um, my number four round. I think I can do most of this with it, but I've got my detail there if I'm going to have any trouble. And I'm going to come here and let me show you the little touch pull strip. Okay. So I want to build like a little sprig that kind of arcs this way of plants. I'm going to do little tiny touch pull strips. They kind of curl in and they imply maybe a little bit of floral decor. Because, you know, sometimes hats have little bits of floral pick. Mm -hmm. Build them up. I think it's important to have big petals and, like, little petals. And I mean, like, really little. Yeah, a little I can make it. It's a fun time to... To practice how little can you make it just tiny delicate fun I'm gonna put some of those up here as well varying up big and small kind of makes a nice little element and then you can give that some symmetry now, in the flowers, I'm going to take a little bit of this white, and very carefully, I'm going to kind of talk about the way these petals are curling. Kind of help that rose get developed. Flowers sometimes can be frustrating when you're new at painting because you think about flowers more than you realize. Mm -hmm. And your brain has a large visual library of flowers. And when you're new to art, your brain will sometimes disagree with you <laughs> about what you're doing. It's really normal and don't worry about it. It will get better in time. There we go. Now I also like to like kind of um, kind of put little raindrops coming down. Coming down the water. It was very Whoa, light. Oh, that's so nice. Just a little light element. To the degree that you can keep uh, your lines straight, it's helpful because gravity tends to pull things straight down, but it just makes it feel like there's a heavier cascade of water coming down. Mm -hmm. And I like that one a lot. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go over my white, my red roses. Whoops. Just a little bit with these white lines to kind of help define. Yeah. And I had a little wet uh, red there still, so I've got to come back with my white. Little curving strokes that get bigger and wider as they go out. Tiny mm -hmm. at the center, tiny and small, bigger as they go out. Those really just bring them in. 
Pulls it all together. A little something. A little decorative piece. Fun little art day. Mm -hmm. Nice sometimes to have some paintings that are light and airy for our heart. You can also, like, if you want to add some of the I wouldn't do like stripes. You definitely want to, if you're going to do this part, be able to break up the line and make it kind of regular so it feels like it's like heavier little parts of water coming down. If you did stripes or lines, it would just read as stripes or lines and not like little raindrops in motion. Mm -hmm. And you want it to read like little raindrops in motion. If you can't. I might turn my canvas aside so I have better control over my straight lines. Trying to say that things are dripping down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do big and short strokes. Yes. So I keep it from being a line. So it just feels like rain coming down. And you just take that to your happy. Okay. And then when you like what you have and you can come back with Ray you can come back with different things. It's not like layering will hurt you. I'm going to take my detail brush and I'm going to go ahead and just use my white paint. Give that a signature. There you go. And that's how you paint the girl in the red hat with roses. That's how that's done. Isn't that wonderful? That's awesome. So hopefully you had fun with this. I, uh, I really liked going back into this space. I'm probably going to do some more exploring the idea of black and white and a pop of color because I think it's so beginner friendly. I like these all level classes. Um, I hope you <laughs> thought the thing with the lip was funny and that you had some real magic moments in your art and you were able to just get a good creative space going in this particular project. I really loved spending time with you today. I want you very much to be good to yourself. I want you to be good to each other and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.